Hey there folks, welcome back to this series on concurrency in modern C++. And in this lesson, I want to talk about synchronization with threads. Now we have talked about this a little bit. Allow me to illustrate on the tablet below here. So what we have talked about is this idea of synchronization of threads. And what do I mean by this? Well, previously what we've had is say a thread here, thread two, and really any number of threads that we've tried to launch. And each of those threads might be spawning some piece of code and trying to access some critical section. That is something that was protected by a lock. But as we know, not all of these threads can access this critical section if we have a lock here to protect that critical section. Only one of the threads at a time can acquire this particular lock. So what that means is, well, that's how we prevent errors like data races, for example, or corruption of memory by having multiple threads writing or reading from the same piece of memory simultaneously. So the question is, what are thread two through however many threads we have doing while thread one is accessing this critical section? Well, the answer is they're sort of waiting to acquire a lock. And this is the case of what happens when we have something known as a spin lock, which may be the underlying primitive uh, for the thread library that you're using in the mutex. So that means that you're wasting a lot of computation with your threads constantly checking over and over and over again. Do I have the lock? Do I have access to the lock? Can I acquire the lock? And this is eating up cycles in your process. So there must be a more efficient way. Of course, because it's a C++, there it is. So one of those tools that we have is something known as a condition variable. And a condition variable is another type of synchronization primitive and allows us to block a thread or multiple threads, in a sense, just putting them, that thread to sleep and taking off the queue in a sense uh, where it doesn't have to keep constantly check to see if you acquire a specific lock. So this can be a very efficient primitive. Now, because it's efficient though, we have to do a little bit more work with our condition variable to set this up. So I'm gonna demonstrate this and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. But basically what we're going to need is two threads and we'll think of this as sort of a working thread and then a thread that's going to report the result once the work has been done. You might see this or perhaps have worked with this in sort of a producer consumer type of pattern, which is sometimes called. But I'm going to think of this as just having a working thread and a reporting thread to give the result. And the example is going to be based off the CPP reference. And once I have those two threads, I'm actually going to have a shared variable. And then what I'm going to have is a lock that is also shared between the threads. So really three parts here. And let me go ahead and summarize. So for our synchronization, and I'll do it down here in the corner so we can see it. Uh, for condition variables, I'm going to have some Boolean value. It could really be anything, but usually a Boolean is used. We need some sort of lock. and I'm going to introduce something new called a unique lock, which also follows RAII principles, such as when we use uh, the lock guard, for instance. Uh, but we need a little bit more power because we're going to be using it with this condition variable. And, you know, the fourth thing we need uh, technically really three things just to implement our condition variable is, you know, two threads, a worker and a reporter thread. And that is the worker is going to do some work and we can launch each of these two threads at the same time here, thread one and thread two, but it doesn't matter that they launch at the same time, it's just that the reporter thread is going to wait until it's notified by the working thread that the work's done. And until it's actually notified, this thread here, the reporting thread, will go to sleep. And that's what saves us from the thread spinning and constantly checking to see if there is work available. Okay, so that's the idea here. Let's go ahead and implement this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my code window here and let's go ahead and work on the same. So as I mentioned, we need some sort of 
uh, lock here, as usual. And I'm going to have a global lock here for our mutex, uh, and that is fine for now for learning purposes. And then the new part is going to be this condition variable. And I'm going to also note, notice that uh, I'm going to name this with a G to start here because it is a global variable. And we'll go ahead and proceed from there. And again, here is the condition variable help page if you want to take a look. Okay, so what am I going to have here? I'm going to have two threads that just try to compute some result here. Uh, and for now, I'll just make that result zero. Maybe it'll just compute some value or return 42. Uh, and then I need some Boolean variable. And I'm going to call this notified and initialize it to false. And what this is going to do for this particular Boolean variable is this is the part that's going to communicate between two threads if work has been done by the working thread. And then we can wake up one or more threads to notify them that the work has been completed and another part of our program can continue. And that's the how these condition variable works. So let's go ahead and create uh, one of our threads here. And this is going to be the, uh, let's make this the reporting thread at the top here. And then I'm going to have secondly here, the working thread. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the working thread, because this is where the work is going to begin. I'm going to go ahead and create this thread here. This is the worker. Uh, I'm going to manage this as a uh, lambda here just to make our program a little bit easier to read here. Uh, so that is the uh, capture here. No parameters. And let's go ahead and I'll just make sure I close this off properly. And I'm going to repeat this setup for the porting thread. And let's just go ahead and call this the reporter. You can think of this as the reporting thread or the waiting thread. Okay, so what can we do here? Well, within our worker thread, we're going to want to first obtain a lock. Each of these threads here, the working thread and reporting thread, are synchronized, and meaning that this worker thread must work first and this reporter thread must wait on the work. So I'm going to go ahead and note that here. Must wait on work done by the working Okay, so let's go ahead and focus here. And because these two threads in a way are connected, we want them to share our lock here. Now we're going to use a best practice here and use one of our RAII locks here. And this is a new one that I'm going to introduce called unique lock. And we need unique lock with condition variables, which I'm going to introduce shortly here because it's a little bit more powerful in how it in how it operates. Um, so if I go ahead and just take a quick look at uh, unique lock here, uh, it's in the sample here, uh, we'll see it's another general purpose lock that's available, uh, but it's got more power in that we can control the locking or unlock versus the simple lock guard, which just was an RAII lock that had essentially just a constructor and a key structure. We can actually test and see if the lock's uh, available or not, and uh, so on. So that is our uh, use there. So anyway, let me go ahead and create this. Uh, and this is going to be with a regular mutex. And we'll create the lock. And it's with glock, our global lock. OK, now what we want to do in our working thread is do our work. Do our work uh, because we have the lock. OK, uh, now what do we want to do here? Well, let's go ahead and say that our working thread here has, in fact, um, done some work here. So uh, that can be some results here equals, I don't know, 42 plus uh, 1 plus 7 or whatever computation that we might want to do here. Just compute some result. And then now that our work is done, our work is done, we're going to change notified to true here. OK, and that is our shared state between these two threads here. And that's part of how a conditional variable waits on some work to be done and synchronizes these two threads. And this is a little bit of a weird part here. Because again, condition variable, we're waiting on some sort of condition uh, to be true or false so that some other thread can proceed. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and continue finishing this example. Now I'm going to artificially add again, like we've done in some other examples, a little bit of uh, sleep here just to slow down our program. And I'm going to put this to sleep, or uh, and I'll use the uh, Chrono library uh, about five seconds just so we can uh, see what that time is. Uh, and then we'll print something out. Work complete. Let's put an end line here to make it short. And let's make sure that we include our Chrono library here. Chrono. So that we can use this uh, timing function. Okay, now, uh, now what I want to do with my conditional variable, G condition variable, is notify one of the threads that is sleeping here. And what this does is, if you remember in our diagram here, is it would take one of these threads here, whatever thread happens to be uh, next that's queued up, so that might be this thread, that might be one of these other threads, and it notifies it and says, hey, the lock is free that you're trying to obtain, so you can proceed and do your work. Okay, so that's the idea there. So let me go ahead and open up the code again. And essentially, our working thread is done. So it's fired the lock. It has done some work here. Notified that the work is complete. We artificially just put this to sleep for a little bit, and then we finally wake up a thread. So let me put this here. Wake up a thread that is waiting for some condition to be true. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish off that thread here. And this is our reporting thread. This is the one that's waiting on our working thread on some condition. So similarly, we have a lock here. And we have a mutex and just some lock and the global lock. So again, the lock is shared between these two different threads here. Again, that hasn't changed from our previous concept because, again, we're just waiting on two threads uh, that have the same lock, but trying to acquire the same uh, lock so they can access some critical section, and that's where the synchronization might be. The difference is we're just being more intelligent and in putting asleep one of these threads. Okay, so here's our condition where we say if we have not been notified, then what do we do? Well, on our condition variable, we wait on this lock, okay? Until we have officially um, are able to acquire this lock, okay? And then we actually print out the reporter result is, and we should see, well, this is a shared variable uh, or between the two threads here, result. Right, it's within scope for both these variables. We should see the result 42 plus 1 plus uh, 7, so 50 printed out here. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look in the documentation at what wait is doing and notify 1 just to be a little bit more clear here. So what's happening again with wait? We are blocking the current thread until the conditional variable is woken up. Okay, uh, so that's what wait is doing. So even if this reporting thread happens to execute first, so again, if we have not been notified, meaning that this work has not finished yet, then we have to wait here. Okay, so we are blocking the thread. We're saying, hey, wait here, okay, until our conditional variable is woken up. And so we're waiting on this condition variable. Now, what does the condition variable have? Well, this other function uh, that we use notify one, which notifies one waiting thread. If I click on it, we'll get a little bit more of a description, but you can think of notify one as saying, hey, wake up a thread that is sleeping and being waited on. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, do one last change here and make sure that I add our header for the conditional variable. Condition variable. And then I'm going to try to compile, see if I made any mistakes, and we'll see what happened here. And oops, an extra uh, bracket here. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And get rid of this here. And we'll try again. And result was not uh, declared in scope. Let's give it a type. Int. And I think that should be our last. So let me go ahead and run the code 
and then we'll do a walkthrough and I'll display it all on the screen for you. So I'll go ahead and run this and oops, looks like we got a uh, exception. So what did I forget to do? Anytime we have two threads, well, remember our program can terminate here. So let's make sure that we also join these threads. I'm going to join the reporter and I can join it first. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the worker I can join. And uh, then maybe let's just print out a message to say uh, program complete. Okay, and we'll put a little end line here and make sure that that's all set to go. Okay, compiles, good to go. Let's see if it runs. Well, let's see, we're waiting about five seconds. So our working thread must have executed. The work is complete. And then our reporter reports the result of 50. Because again, our reporting thread here is waiting on this conditional variable that only flips to true once this working thread has completed its work. And it sort of makes sense. They're sharing a lock here. So even if this particular thread would execute first, if it hasn't been notified, well, it needs to release this lock so that this thread can uh, essentially start executing. And if we want to see that, um, let me go ahead and uh, just show you uh, on the conditional variable page uh, wait again that because this is the part that's a little bit confusing I think for newer folks that wait causes the current thread to block okay so this thread would be blocked and this next part it automatically unlocks this lock here okay which lock are we unlocking well that's the global lock that's shared between our working thread and our reporting thread so just something to keep in mind there Conditional variables do take a little bit of effort to understand, but we're being very efficient, right? So in the case, even if this reporter thread again executes first and obtains the lock here, well, we haven't been notified, uh, right? That is um, true here, the opposite of false. We're negating that. So we say, hey, block this thread and wait till we get a result. It's going to wait here at line 21 until this lock can then be acquired by the working thread compute our result, notify our threads, we're going to change that uh, condition, um, and then execute uh, notify one. All right, so those are typically the pieces that are needed to get condition variables to work. They're a very powerful synchronization primitive that's available to us in C++. Uh, I would say they take a little bit of extra effort to understand versus a lock because we usually have um, a few different parts to them. The Boolean variable that is part of the uh, condition that's true or false, the actual lock, um, similar to what we had. Uh, this time, again, I'm using a unique lock and the condition variable itself that we can wait and then notify a thread when that condition has been satisfied. So this has been a pretty deep lesson. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead and make the font just a little bit smaller so you can see everything. Uh, on the screen at once here um, as we uh, complete the video here. Go ahead and uh, scroll up here. Uh, and as always, all these samples are included, but here it is. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, and if you did enjoy this, well, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe, and we'll continue on to the next lessons.